Welcome to The Microscopists, a bite-sized bio podcast, hosted by Peter O'Toole, sponsored by Zeiss Microscopy. Today on The Microscopists. Hello, I'm Peter O'Toole from the University of York, and today I'm joined by Judith Klumperman of the University Medical Center Utrecht, and we'll be discussing things such as the importance of scientific collaboration. It's all the different techniques that you can um, put next to each other and, and they all fill in a piece of the puzzle. And it is the, it is the challenge to, to together, you know, to get people together and fill in these uh, pieces of the puzzle. Travelling the world whilst bird watching with her husband. For many years, uh, when we arrived somewhere, I couldn't talk to him because, you know, shh, shh, I have to listen to birds and they're there. The brilliant tradition of the thesis examination system in the Netherlands. And then we come back and then, you know, it's uh, the, the, the bill, as we call it, the diploma is, uh, is, uh, is given to the person. And we are allowed to uh, applaud and, uh, and then we have a party. And her wish to find a sustainable model for financing microscopy going forward. A lot of the PIs which should dedicate their time to microscopy are dedicating their time to get the money to do the microscopy. And if there would be a, a better system for that, I, I think that that really would help on, 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 on many aspects to increase the fee. All in this episode of The Microscopists. Hi, I'm Peter O'Toole from the University of York and today on The Microscopist I'm joined by Judith Klumperman from the University Medical Centre at Utrecht. Hello Judith. Hi Pete, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, so I've got a few questions actually to start with. Are you a cell biologist, an electron microscopist, a light microscopist? What would you count yourself as? I would count myself as a cell biologist. Uh, and I use mostly electron microscopy um, to, yeah, to look at the questions I'm interested in. But I, I see myself as a cell biologist. Not, yeah. So that was your, I, I presume your undergraduate then, your, your first degree was in cell biology? Yeah, yeah, I graduated uh, in biology, uh, in fact, yeah. Okay, and so what, yeah, cell biology isn't electron microscopy. Yeah, that, 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 that's something that is, Less time, it's a technique that is used, but obviously you really forge your career in the in the coupling of the, the scientific question and the technology. Yeah. And you are one of the leaders in the electron microscopy field. So where did you first encounter your first electron microscope? The first electron microscope, uh, that was uh, in my study in, uh, in biology. So I studied uh, at Leiden uh, University. And so actually I was, I was, getting interested in electron microscopy at, at high school uh, during biology classes and I saw pictures in, in the books and uh, that um, yeah that that hit something with me I it, I got fascinated by that and I thought okay this is something I really would like to do and uh, so I, I uh, studied uh, biology and then uh, after the bachelor, you could do the master. And the first master I did was electron microscopy because I was really drawn to that. And uh, actually, um, the, my um, master thesis was about um, um, the accumulation of lipofuxin, that is the um, uh, pigmentation that you uh, accumulate when you get older in the liver. And uh, the sites of accumulation are the lysosomes. So this is this is where it started. And uh, yeah, it has also always been um, yeah um, my drive. I, I've always enjoyed to to use the microscope to to look at the cells. It, it's. I'm just thinking about how someone got inspired from looking at black and white pictures, <laughs> just, because of course we, they weren't or very rarely full yeah. coloured. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, it's, it's for me, um, I don't see black and white pictures. I, I see so much in them. 
but I, I do realize that for other people, they may be uh, a little bit boring. So we start now by hand sometimes also to add some colors. Um, I, I could say that uh, developing CLEM, uh, you know, one of the uh, motivations could have been to add some pictures, uh, but that was not the real, or to add some colors to the EM pictures, but that of course was not the real motivation. Uh, but we are doing our best these days, Peter, to, to make the, the, the gray uh, EM pictures also more um, appealing to the, the people that, that like the, the colors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just just going back, we'll come on to Clem in a moment. Do you what what was your first electron microscope that you used then? My the first one. Yeah. Oh, that was during my PhD, uh, and that was a uh, um, Philips uh, two o one. Was it Philips? Yeah, that was before it was Fay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was a very small one. And um, I was a bit frustrated by that because I was in a lab and they had three electron microscopes and, and there was one much better than I was allowed to use. So if I wanted to go into a higher magnification, it just was not sharp enough. And there was a, an electron microscope um, just next door who, who was much better. But the only one uh, allowed to use that was the professor. And I was just a starting PhD and I was not allowed to use the, the microscope I really wanted to. I think that was a, a, a 300, uh, Philips 300. So um, yeah, that was um, yeah, one of the things that, um, you know, that uh, I had to put up a little fight. And uh, so in the end, I could do my PhD on the Philips 300, yeah. So you did get on it, which was, which was good. So from your, so that's your master's PhD, what did you then go on to do? To the, uh, from the master's to the PhD. Yeah, so from the master, once you finish yeah. your PhD, uh, what did you then go on to do? After the PhD, yeah. yeah, as a postdoc, yeah. Um, I became uh, a postdoc in the lab of Hans Geuze. Uh, who uh, yeah, was running um, uh, a, a famous EM lab in the Netherlands at that time uh, and doing the immunoelectron microscopy. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, I'm, I'm also married to him now. So uh, this is, you know, but 30 years ago or more than 30 years ago, I think 35 years ago. Uh, yeah, I came to work in the lab. And uh, oh yeah, that's him, and uh, and a lot of penguins, <laughs> and um, yeah. So um, again, I my my choice was electron microscopy, and uh, for the second postdoc, um, I yeah I went to to Amsterdam, but but these were quite um, yeah. A lot of people said to me, "There's no future in electron microscopy." Uh, and uh, what you should do is molecular biology. So I tried that. I tried also during my studies uh, to do some, you know, real molecular biology, but I, I really did not get the excitement there. I can of course see all the importance, but me doing those experiments, it did not work uh, really well. Uh, and uh, I, I, I was much less inspired by it. So I, I, or, yeah, I choose really to do uh, uh, what I like, and that was electron microscopy. So it's it's a bit boring maybe because it, I was captured by that, and um, I'm still by that uh, this day. And of course, it changed a lot because when I started, you know, you could publish a paper all with nice pictures, and that's it. But now, of course, it, it has changed so much. And that you can combine with light microscopy, that you can combine it with interfering with cells, with, with knocking out genes. So, um, and so my overexpression of proteins, there's, there's so many additions now. And so that, that still makes it so rewarding to do and so many possibilities. It was interesting at the start that you said that, yeah, back in, I guess this was the, the 90s uh, when you were doing your postdoc, that you, you were told that 
yeah, electron microscopy, there's no career here. There's no future yeah. because yeah. light microscopy was exploding onto the scene and lots of people were moving into that. But you persevered. And, and also molecular biology, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Light microscopy was even later. <clears throat> so, but you stuck with it. And I think it's fair to say that electron microscopy is now on back on the up. See, well, actually hugely on the up. And it's touching every branch of biology again, from structural yeah. biology through to your sound biology yeah. with the CLEM, the 3D and the combinations. So how is that? <laughs> How have you surfed that wave of the technologies? Because suddenly you, know, you had two or three electron microscopes in your early days that you had access to. Suddenly electron microscope technology is moving forward and they are not cheap to replace. So how stressful is it trying to keep at the forefront of electron microscopy? Um, yeah, so of course, Imaging has changed a lot with the digital imaging and, and, and the, the increase in resolution is enormous. And um, so electron microscopy, there are different types of electron microscopy now. And, uh, and with each type, you can address a specific question. And I, of course, I, I, I follow that and I, I see the people like the cryo EM, you know, going all into the, the molecular structures. I, I see the, the, the great developments and, and possibilities there. But I, I see that as an um, um, uh, next to the work that I am doing. So I, it's, it's not competing or so, it's, it's, it's all different techniques. And, and like also the, the volume EM, and it's all the different techniques that you can um, put next to each other, and, and they all fill in a piece of the puzzle. And it is the it is the challenge to to together, you know, to get people together and fill in these uh, uh, pieces of the puzzle. And um, yeah, I have always, I mean, for the developments, you you have to 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 be close to what really inspires you. Uh, and for me, that have always been the, the, the questions on, on the cellular level, the, the membrane trafficking, the, the organelle biogenesis. And um, so I, with, within all the developments uh, and, 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 and the connections with the other labs, I kept on focusing on that. Um, and and try to to yeah be at the forefront of of that part of the electron microscopy. So I I could be wrong here. So to slap me down if I am wrong. But you say you're a cell biologist. But I, I remember as a PhD student being told or as a postdoc that you have to follow and study a biological question to have a successful academic career. Here you are. You're a professor. Very very successful academic career. And I would argue that actually you haven't dived deep into addressing one biological question, but you're very broad and applying electron microscopy to solve lots of cell biology questions. Firstly, is, is, is that correct? Well, <laughs> Secondly, yeah, yeah. how I, I think that's, for, you know, considering the timing of this, you must have been one of the very few people to forge an academic career and not have a single biological question that you're addressing, but really very broad sets of questions. Well, I think this is also uh, because of the nature of the work that I'm doing. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the cell. By, by doing electron microscopy, you by definition are looking at the cell. So you can change something in the ER, but it will also change the, um, uh, the plasma membrane or, or the secretory pathway. You can change something in the lysosome, but it will also affect the mitochondria. And I think that and that has always been um yeah i always have liked that to to look at the question in the context of the cell uh, because you cannot see it apart from uh, if if i'm looking at the lysosome um you cannot look at, at the lysosome alone there's also the contact sites uh, there is there's always there, there are so many connections and this is what you see by the electron microscope. I mean, I'm looking at the lysosome, for example, but I see the ER around it. And uh, so you can't close your eyes for for the uh, for the for, for the for the context. 
So that is one thing. Um, and uh, the other thing is that, um, yeah, because um, uh, the lab is, is good in a, in a technology that, that not so many people in the world are capable of doing, I, I get a lot of, of requests for uh, collaborations. And uh, that is also just great fun. It is also great fun to be inspired by the questions that others have and to work together uh, on, on trying to solve the question. And, um, and, and, and thirdly, it is, I also find it um, yeah, quite important to share what we can do. Uh, so that, that a lot of people can benefit from it. So it is not only that, that we do that via collaborations, but we are also giving the courses and we really try to, to, um, um, yeah, to uh, share our technologies with, with other people. Uh, I, oh, I was going to go in one direction. I'm going to go in a different direction now. You just, no, no, I'm going to, we'll come back to that. <laughs> because I've got a question. I'd like to go back to the picture we showed yourself and your, your husband here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a picture of yourself looking very wrapped up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Binocular yeah. camera with lots of penguins around you. So yeah. Yeah. firstly, where is this? This is at the Falklands, the Falkland Islands. So at the south of Argentina. And what type of penguins are they? These are the rock hopper. Okay. Yeah. And you, you sent quite a lot. Are these all? Are they all yeah. rock hoppers then? Uh, these one, yeah. Also, you can see it by the funny uh, things they have uh, yeah. with their eyes, eyebrow yeah. type things. Yeah. And uh, the, there was one that really caught my attention. Is this still in the Falklands as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Yeah. I mean, Black sitting. Brown albatross. Yeah, yeah. And we were sitting uh, next to the the nest and the, and the young ones and um yeah it was it was an amazing experience yeah so is this a, a general interest in nature or is it birds in particular or yeah yeah so my my husband is a is a birder so um very enthusiastic his whole life uh so uh and so i call myself the the birder's wife uh, because I, I have seen many, many birds in my life, uh, but, you know, um, it, it is Hans really who, who, who drives that interest. But uh, meanwhile, we, we have been traveling to so many beautiful places uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, yeah, that has been uh, a really uh, a great pleasure through, uh, through many years. Yeah. And so how keen a bird is he a bird watcher or do you are familiar with the term twitcher yeah he he was a twitcher uh, now it's a bit less uh, but for many years uh, when we arrived somewhere i couldn't talk to him because you know i have to listen to the birds and they're there um and he's a bit more relaxed now but i think he has more than seven thousand or so i don't know no, six thousand well a lot and i'm not interested at all in, in in twitching i just like to be there to sit there to see it happen i i can see the birds and you know i'm i'm also a lazy bird because i say what is that and then he says well that's that's that one but it, it is very nice because you go there and then you know there is this, you know, um, this this very special bird and it is very difficult to see it, like the, the dancing mannequins or, you know, it's it's or the, the, the cock of the rock in the Peru and you go there and it, it really adds something to the, the nature uh, experience. I'm, I'm just looking through the extra pictures that you sent and Obviously, this this is not it's not a bird. No, a bird. no, 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 well, no. I presume no. you were there on a birding trip, but taking yeah, yeah. So where where is this? Yeah, this is Thailand. Yeah, yeah. It was great fun. Yeah, yeah. So this was uh, this was an uh, an elephant uh, resort in uh, in the north of Thailand, uh, and um, so the the elephants were really treated very well there and we had a ride on them and then we had the bus together and it was just uh, it was just great fun yeah right so so well traveled so I, I take it uh i've got one more picture which just kind of yeah obviously this is the great wall of china even yeah. i know where this one is yeah 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 uh, i i put that in because i i just thought okay when i'm only sending in penguins and so you you may think i'm i'm never 
doing something you know never going to a city uh, and um, so this was actually uh, one of the, the the scientific trips but in blue is 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 my my friend and uh, with her, I always do the, the city trips. Um, so um, with Hans, I always go to the nature uh, destinations. And, and with my friend, I go to you know cities. We do that uh, many years. We always have the city trips here in the, in Shanghai. Uh, sometimes she, you know, on these big trips, she, she, she can join me. And but we also, of course, do shorter trips. And uh, so it's I, I have interest in in both. Um, you know, go to museum, nice restaurants but I divided a little bit with uh, uh, what I'm doing with whom. So what's your favorite rest type of what is your favorite type of food when you eat out? Uh, I like a lot but I think the Asian kitchen like the curries, uh, Indian uh, Thai, I really really like that yeah. Do you get good curry houses, good Indian restaurants in the Netherlands? Not so much in the Netherlands, no. No, Thai, we have more Thai. Yeah, not. I know in England there's a lot of Indian restaurants. I always like to go to an Indian restaurant uh, in, uh, in, uh, in England. It's there, but not so much. But we know how to find them. Which is always good. Right. And I, I've, got to, I'll just, I've, got to, I've got to ask this one question. What is your favourite bird? Mm, that I think that is the um, the the cory bustard that we saw in Australia, and we um, I don't know whether it's special, but it's a big, big, big bird, and he was displaying. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was great. It it he had all these feathers, and and we, in the beginning we hardly could see believe it was a bird and we saw that and we saw the the, the ladybirds surrounding it and also kangaroos jumping it, it was an amazing sight i think we saw that in 1994 or so so a long time ago already but it's still uh, it's still there i think you said yeah you know, it takes you to some amazing places so i presume this is a local reserve maybe? this is just this is just at the entrance of our village yeah Super cool. So I, I, yeah, we have a, a yeah, similar, a nice local nature reserve with reed beds, but nothing as big. Uh, it's it's not very big. It is six hectare. I don't know the English word for it. It's it's so. Actually, this was one of the things that that Hans was involved in when he was coming to live here fifty years ago, and they wanted to make an, an a new houses here. Uh, oh no, they wanted to make new houses on the other side of the road, and he said, okay, let's. Uh, dig it from here and put it on the other side and uh, then it was so low that they only could make a nature reserve of it and not plan another you know lots of houses and now it's it's quite it's small but it is quite well de uh, developed there are a lot of orchids and we have a, a black tern colony which returns uh, every year uh, and so quite some people are coming and to to photograph it and yeah, each each day when I return uh, from work, uh, you know, this is this is uh, coming home. Uh, that's a whole black dog. We're going into birding now, which is not no, good. We, we I, not I, I will pull out. <laughs> I, I will come back from that. So you were mentioning about sharing uh, the importance of sharing electron microscopy access to it. Of course, you led on the the national Netherlands bioimaging. I, I, I don't know what would be the right term, which has become part of I think Euro bioimaging as well and i think just expanded very recently I, I think looking at the last thing so what why is euro bioimaging why is bioimaging and sharing these nodes so important what is it enabling that you couldn't otherwise do yeah so we are part uh, of uh, of euro bioimaging uh, and um I think we also met there a lot huh? in the in the in the euro bioimaging and um so and uh, that so I was there for Clem connecting the light microscopy to the electron uh, microscopy and that that really inspired the idea of of sharing technologies and um, with well what we discussed already that imaging has e evolved so much there are so many imaging technologies now and uh, uh, that that need expensive equipment that needs really um, 
expert operators. Uh, so it is really changing that, that in one lab you try to do everything uh, the whole day to uh, that you take a question and you use these different technologies and you, you, you use all of them part of it. So it is much better than to, to, to make uh, sites where a technology is, is um, uh, developed uh, uh, to the max and that you allow other people to get that sites, then that everybody tries to do the same things. And I think that is that is what what you are by imaging and also what you show here. So inspired by your by imaging, we we also um, went for a Dutch infrastructure on electromicroscopy, and 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 that was uh, granted, uh, and that is also very nice. And it's all the idea that that um, so I think everybody needs um, a basic infrastructure on microscopy. Uh, but then for the really high end questions, um, you can go to these expert places uh, where, where, where really the, the best people can help you uh, to, um, to do your experiments there. And I think this is the added value of, of these large uh, consortia that, that you on the one hand can better develop uh, the different technologies and the other hand that you um, can um, um, uh, provide access to a much broader user group than only your own local environment. And just, just to put it in context for, for those who aren't watching it and listening, this was worth over 17 million euros. But that's then distributed over, I, I can't remember how many nodes, five, six different... Yeah, there, there are nine universities uh, um, involved. And uh, so we, we chose some flagship technologies, as we call it, like CLAM, like multimodal electromicroscopy, um, uh, like... Um, um, uh, the um, uh, link between electromicroscopy and mass spectrometry. And we also uh, connected the life sciences to the material sciences and to the development. So we brought together also these, these communities. And uh, so, yes, it was, uh, it, it was distributed. Uh, um, it, and, and also we, we set up an, a course program. So it was, it was uh, distributed over six sites. So, and so, and it's obviously recently grown. Can I ask uh, quite a work related question? How many people actually travel to the nodes? Is there, we notice sort of certainly in most facilities, some people will travel to nodes, but generally, if it's not on the doorstep, it's harder to get people engaged. And, but how, how successful have you managed to engage? other users to, to, from outside of each node to come and use that node's facilities? Yeah, well, I think this is a very valid point because you have to be careful that, that all these, these, these great instruments are not only used by the nerds, you know, that, 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 that the people that are not familiar with it start to realize uh, how important it is to, to, to use some of, 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 the, of the microscopes. Um, so um, what we do is we we um, in, in in the Netherlands we organize these open days, uh, and we we really reach out to a uh, to a lot of people. Uh, but there is of course always an, um, um, a kind of, of 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 hurdle for people to to come to the uh, electron uh, microscopes, especially. When we started to do the CLEM, so also the, the light microscope, it's easier already for people to connect to light microscopy. And once they are in, they, you know, they can connect easier to the electron microscope. And, um, but it is, an, it is yeah, also, so, so uh, training young people, uh, connecting uh, different areas, but still also in, in NAMI, the Netherlands EM uh, infrastructure, we are still in a group together. So the, the outreach uh, to, to other people, that, that is also something that, that we need to take great care of. And in the Netherlands together, we have now about 1300 people uh, last year making use of NAMI, but that is well, of, co of course, of the different, uh, the, all the different nodes together. 
uh, and um, I can't say at the moment now how many were from outside the Netherlands. But of course, uh, initiatives like Eurobio Imaging, and, and also we participated in, in Corabel, which uh, linked a microscopy to proteomics and, and the other technologies, uh, those are so um, um, important to, to get uh, also the people that may not think of using microscopy now uh, to, to also get them to the, uh, uh, to the labs, to the microscopes. Still a good number. I mean, 1,300, even if it's just within the Netherlands and, uh, and people are moving about within the Netherlands to access the best resources. Yeah. yeah it, it's so much better, I guess, to put it into one site than to duplicate it and have less use. And the expertise is diluted and no one can become so expert. So this is, I presume, your own group? Yes, yes, yeah. So clearly uh, pre-COVID. Yeah, so that was a goodbye dinner of one of the PhD students on the right, Job Fermi, uh, who is now in a microscopy development uh, uh, company. Yeah, so um, we like to have um, fun. <laughs> <laughs> and taking the picture is? Oh, that's Nalan, uh, yeah. Nalan Liv. Uh, and uh, so she's a very important person uh, in the lab. And uh, so we were talking why I was an, uh, becoming an electron microscopist. And, and I said, well, I'm a cell biologist. And um, so this is, I, I really do not know so much about the technology. And um, uh, Nalan knows both about the technology, she did a PhD in physics and the cell biology. So she uh, she combines uh, a lot of uh, knowledge, which is, is, is highly valuable uh, in the lab. And she also likes the party. <laughs> I can testify to that. Uh, so actually, uh, I had the great pleasure to actually be one of the Viva people for, for Narlan on her PhD from Jacob's lab. She was in Delft. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. But actually, for those listening, the Viva system in the Netherlands is quite different to some of the other countries. The Viva uh, system, the Viva? The actual system, the Viva system, uh, the day of passing out, I don't know what the right term is, the day you actually gain your PhD, it's still very ceremonial. Uh, yes. You know, I, I couldn't believe it when you have to still gown up. And mm -hmm. ask questions and learn. so describe the system for those who are not aware of what it's like on PhD day, <laughs> the day of your viva. Yeah, so it is. Um, yeah, so we we have quite some old universities in the in the Netherlands, like in Leiden and in Utrecht, and and they have these old buildings so that in the middle of the city center, so that already gives uh, you know um, a, a quite some cachet to it. And um, so, um, yes, we dress up with the, the hats and the, and, the, and, and the robes. And then um, we have uh, a person, it's called the, the, the beadle. And uh, he or she has this stick with all the bells. And uh, so um, that person works in front, uh, uh, walks in front, and then we are coming, you know, the cortege. And after that, there is the, the person that is going to get the PhD with two of his uh, uh, paranyms, as you call it. And then we have a, a ceremony. There is audience there. Um, and um, yeah, we ask questions and uh, we have to be very formal. So, dear candidate, I congratulate you with your nice thesis. And you know, it's, it's always, although you have been with them for four years, it's suddenly. And then uh, after exactly 45 minutes, the beetle comes back again and she stands with the, with the staff on the, on the ground and she says, Aura est. And then we all have to shut up and then we stand up again. And you know, if we rise, everybody has to rise. Yeah, it's formal. And then we come back and then, you know, it's uh, the, the, the bill, as we call it, the diploma is, uh, is, uh, is given to the person and we are allowed to uh, applaud. And, uh, and then we have a party. Yeah, it, it's very different to what it is, uh, how it's performed in the UK. Uh, and it, I don't know what's better, actually. I really like, I really enjoyed. Uh, well, a lot of people, because we, we try, you know, to, to ask people from abroad uh, and they all love it. 
So yeah, I think that is what tradition does. It, it gives it a bit more cachet to an ordinary um, uh, event. And I, I, I remember very well just how good Nalan was. <laughs> she, she, she was excellent, I remember. And you still get asked questions, which, which can be difficult questions, but now your audience or your peers and your family listening to you being grilled. Yeah. Uh, maybe the grilling yeah. is very formal, but maybe slightly friendlier than, than it can be maybe in other yeah. systems. But that was a wonderful day. So please say hello to Nalan for I will, I, of course. Because um, yeah. it's, yeah, super cool for us. So you mentioned Clem. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with Clem, uh, hence at the start, we mentioned the light microscopy, electron microscopy, cell biologist. Would you like to just very briefly describe Clem and why Clem is so important? So with Clem, you look at the same sample by light microscopy and electron microscopy. And it is important because it is the same sample. And that means that you can um, 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 put the information you get uh, from both technologies uh, right over each other. And so um, you can use, so, so light microscopy is of course very good to get an overview. It has a, 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 a great sensitivity to detect proteins. You can look at live cells, you can look at active proteins, and these are all things we cannot do or not so well by electron microscopy. And electron microscopy is, uh, of course, great in, in, in the resolution uh, that you can, how, how much you can zoom in, in revealing the, the context information. Uh, but now we, we, you can, for example, look at, let's say, at a lysosome, my, my favorite uh, compartment, by light microscopy and see how it is distributed by lo you, uh, looking at a marker. And you can look in, by electron microscopy. Uh, and see by morphology, this is a lysosome and that is a lysosome. But you get your information from two completely separated technologies. And now you can start to, to overlay that and say, this is an active compartment. Here are hydrolases active, or this one is moving. Um, and so it's, it's um, um, by integrating these, these functional parameters, also morphology, you, you really increase the knowledge you can gain. So, Clem, so uh, it had to be a short answer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, 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 I, I just, it's probably going to where it leads on to the, for, for the next question, anyways. What's the next big challenge? What's the um, next? Yeah. Now, I think the. Um, the bottlenecks are um, the uh, overlaying of the information, um, so the accuracy there, uh, but um, mostly also the, uh, the electron microscopy, uh, so the, the throughput of the technology. Uh, so I think there are, there are multiple challenges that is combining more types of, because CLEM, you know, you can have different types of light microscopy and different types of EMs, so there, there's more to, to gain there. Uh, the accuracy of the technique and also the, the throughput. Um, and uh, of course, uh, automation uh, of, of the image processing is important there. And also um, now, if you go to 3D images, um, we all can gain, but, you know, this is not a surprise saying that everybody's saying that by more automation of, of recognizing the structures you were looking at. So I, I, you, you then jumped in as well to 3D EM. And I, I know most in the field will know that 3D EM and how it's done. Uh, some of the, the non-specialists listening in, uh, watching it, may not understand, how can you get a 3D electron microscope image? Yeah, so there are different, different ways to do that. Uh, you can just make uh, sections as you always do and put them in a row together and then, you know, pile them up and make a 3D image. Um, or you can make a tomogram. Um, or you can uh, use the, the FIPSEM these days. So I think this is one of the yeah, major innovations now that we can use FIPSEM to look at the interior interior of the cell. 
So uh, SEM, scanning electromicroscopy, is, is, is developed to look at the, the surface. So you look at the surface of, an, of a sample, but then you can remove the surface by the, 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 the FIP, the focused ion beam, you can make the next picture. So it is like serial sections, but with, um, uh, it, it goes quicker and you can make four nanometer sections, so you have much less gaps. Uh, and uh, again, uh, piling up those pictures in 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 uh, in one file gives you a three D image, which which take you back now again to when electron microscopy shouldn't follow that because it's not going anywhere. Three D EM was not really a thing back in the nineties. Uh, it's been revolutionised, I think, by the by the focused ion beams, the FIBSEMs, and sure. I, I guess, and also the also the the digital images, so that that you can combine the images uh, on the computer. Yeah, I never really thought about trying to stack a load of Polaroid photos on top of each other to see a three D. That was never going to work, was it? Yeah. <laughs> so when I started, I I was only using negatives. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea of trying to get your head around a three D image with all these photographs, essentially <laughs> processed. At a, Yes, pharmacist or whatever. Brilliant. And so, can I ask you, what is your favourite publication that you have been author or co-author on? I should have warned you of that one. Uh, um, For whatever uh, reason, good, yeah. you know. I think, yeah, I, I think... Um, the, the, the last paper is always closest to your mind, huh? Uh, so um, I, I don't have a real favorite, uh, but um, the, yeah, I, so the last, but then you remember how much work it has been, you know, all, all the questions you had. And, and of course, also remembering that, that the, the pieces of the puzzle start to work, uh, to, to fall together. Um, so for now, I, I would say the, the last paper that we had on the, um, uh, the effects of uh, uh, mutations in VPS41 and, and how that um, affects the cells and also um, leads to a neurological phenotype. And I have to ask, you may not want to answer, did it get, when you, when you submitted it to a journal, did it get into the first journal you submitted it to? Or did you have to go two, three different attempts? Oh, it, was, it was hopeless. Um, I really, because we are, we as a group are quite proud on this paper because we are doing so many things in that. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it was, you know, working with primary patient fibroblasts, it, it was not an easy thing to do. Uh, and then, you end up a little bit in this 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 gray zone between fundamental research and applied research. So um, for the fundamental uh, journals, they say, okay, you know, we know already that Hobbes was involved in infusion. So, and and the applied said, okay, it's too fundamental. And so we found embryo molecular medicine, and we are really uh, very happy that it's published there. I, I think it's, uh, it's it's a good journal for that. Uh, but it is, um, yeah, it is uh, having papers published just like that. I don't know, maybe some people uh, make that work, but uh, it, it usually uh, takes quite some effort to get your paper published. I, I think that's quite good to hear from yourself, because obviously you're a leader in the field, so surely you, your publications just get straight in to the journal that you apply to. No, we have to work hard for it. But okay, you know, I, I think um, this is the good thing of the review system uh, that that you that you get the feedback of other people to improve your work and, and that I really value. Um, but sometimes you, you come to a point that you think, okay, you know, <sighs> we have done enough now, <laughs> really, give me a break. Yeah, but I think this is this is uh, a lot of people will recognize that. That that was an interesting comment because uh, I can't remember who it was of the previous guests mentioned that it might have been Petra actually Petra Schwiller that people now want the complete publication. They they, they don't want you know part of a story. Uh, publication certainly when I was doing my PhD postdoc, it was publications were in bits. 
you know, someone would publish a bit of work, someone else, another group would publish something to add on to it and you build a bigger picture. Do you, do you think also that there is now a drive that people reviewing it now want it completely wrapped up in the publication? Yeah, it, it, that connects to what I said earlier, that the possibilities are, are much wider now. So um, in the beginning, um, I, I published papers with only electron microscopy. And that, I mean, it can be done, but that is very difficult. And, 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 and rightfully so, because you can do so much more by combining it, you know, with molecular tools and, and, and biochemistry. Um, and um, what we experienced uh, quite some uh, times in, in, the, in the past is that you publish your morphology data or you submit them and then they say it's descriptive. And then I really get, you know, because I always found there is a kind of, because there was a lot of molecular studies, now it is more combined, but there were a lot of molecular studies that completely lacked any microscopy. So they only described one part of the puzzle. And I was always thinking, but we described the other part. Um, but, but it, it you know, it's, it's more difficult to, to get the morphology published than the molecular uh, biology. So, okay. it, and, and um, so, so somebody uh, told me once, you have to go from morphology to mechanism. And that is always what I have in my head now, I, that, that when you publish something, so we add unique um, um, information, that, that, that you know is not easily uh, obtained by other technologies, but you need to put that into the direction of, of the mechanism. And, and that is what we try. Um, and, um, but, but again, th there is a limit to what you can do, of course. Uh, and of course, you can uh, uh, collaborate with a lot of other people and other labs, but um, at some point that this is it, it, it becomes a, a massive paper. <laughs> you have to stop now because otherwise you're going to bite yourself in the tail, you know, you, you, you are adding all the things uh, there, but, but you are losing what you did in the beginning. So yeah, that is always a point, yeah, how to decide. So yourself, so, so you've, you've been on the receiving end of reviewers wanting more and too much, do you follow that suit or do you buck that trend and say, no, no, no. And do you review it as you would like your paper to be reviewed? Yeah, Are exactly. You... When I review a paper, I uh, put on uh, the same quality criteria if I would put on my own work. Okay, so, you're not all, so you wouldn't be someone who's seeking those extra bits to, to, to complete it. You, you're sticking to how you think it should be done yourself well, you know it, it can be of course that you that you ask for some extra uh, experiments if, if you, they are obviously uh, required um but i so as i said i think an important thing about the the review process is is that we benefit also from each other uh, so that 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 um, now as a reviewer you you can give important feedback you can help to make the the paper better um, and of course, you can um, see the the lacunas in the in 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 the, in the, in the paper. And if it's really not not the quality, you know, you can accept, and then you can't accept it. So, moving moving from what can be quite a stressful thing, what do you do to relax? You know, you've got all this stress. You've got the you've got the comments back. Maybe they're not good comments. God, what do you go? How are you going to chill out at a weekend? What do you do besides bird watch? Yeah, well, I mean, this is it. I, I go to a silent place. I, I, yeah, I work. I, this is, you know, this is, I do, uh, try to do every evening walking with the dog. And um, yeah, that's a great way to relax. I'm outside. I'm, I'm often walking in the little nature reserve at the beginning of the, of the, of the village. Uh, and um, so part of, is this also, this, you said this picture here, is this also local to you? 
Yeah, so this is the other way of the road. So on the one hand, we have this uh, marshy thing, and this is the other way of the road. Yeah, so this, this I'm standing in between looking at the left and, uh, and the right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's great. And so we, we have, you know, we have all these uh, routes uh, that, that we can walk. And I, I that is, and well, in addition, what I do is um, I read a book. Uh, or I look at a Netflix uh, series or, okay. uh, you know, those kinds well, of I usually ask quick fire questions. So you say you sometimes read a book and, and what, what, what sort of book do you read? What, what do you enjoy reading? Uh, I, I read all kinds of books. Uh, so I just finished a, a Scandinavian thriller. Uh, which are, I really liked, uh, but I can also um, descriptions of, of, of um, what happened in the past or persons and, and um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I can read quite quickly, so I, I just read a lot of books, you know, it's, uh, and it, it can be everything. But you said you also like what, going to Netflix, so... Yeah. Is yeah. that what, do you binge watch a series? I, I, I cannot believe this, but uh, Richard Henderson said he got into watching Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. I've um, seen, it, yeah. And as promised, I have actually started watching it. So I did promise him I would, so I now have the box that I am now. Slowly, it's hard to find time. No, no, but you have to, you have to uh, be a little bit um, um, in control here. So we are not binge watch watchers. So in the beginning, we said um, this, uh, uh, only one evening in the week and then in the weekend. With uh, Corona, it changed a little bit because there's less diversion, but, but we are quite, co uh, quite good in keeping uh, one series or one, um, what is it, episode uh, at a time, because otherwise you're just sitting there and then it's also taking too long. Uh, so what type of, go on, what, what's your, what's the trashiest thing you watch on TV then? Trashiest? The trashiest, the worst, the, the, the one that people go, you don't watch that, do you? My, 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 my secrets, uh, yeah. Well, not anymore. It's really a long time ago, but I did watch The Bold and the Beautiful for a while. Okay. Is, is that trashy enough? <laughs> I, I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> keep, it keep it that way. It's a soap. <laughs> it's a soap. Okay. Yeah. No, we don't really like, uh, we don't really watch so much television. Yeah. And what about films? What sort of, what's your favourite film of all time? Uh, I don't watch so many films. Uh, I um, I'm not so good in sitting too long. Uh, so uh, my favorite uh, of all times. No, I really I really don't can say that. No, I, I I'm you know I, I just like a lot of things. I uh, again and I'm I'm always um, I'm always very involved in a, in a movie or film and I look at it I, I can't go with people because I always start crying uh, it's you know <laughs> so it's, I can be completely absorbed so I'm, I'm 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 in that movie but then you know day after I'm I forgot it so yeah I, there's a good thing about that because then you can always watch the movie again and not know what's going to happen yeah, 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 yeah. But then I will cry again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, they, 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 they have all these tricks and they all work on me. Brilliant. So some quick fire questions then. Are you an early bird or night owl? Uh, neither. I'm, I'm really in the in-between. Okay. Uh, bike or car? Car. Car? What are you driving? Oh, uh, a hybrid. Hybrid coffee. Cool. Tea or coffee? Both. I drink three, uh, I start with tea, then three coffee, and then tea, and then evening tea. So it's three to three. Oh, so I was going to say wine or beer. So if you're still drinking tea in the evening, go on, wine or beer? Wine. White, red or white? Both. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's so at the end of the afternoon uh, when we have a drink, it's white, and when it's in the evening, it's red. <laughs> chocolate or cheese? Also both. Yeah, yeah. I like chocolate, um, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm from the Netherlands. That, so that was I, I, I eat cheese. I was going to say, can you actually say chocolate over cheese if you're if you're from the Netherlands? I, I did wonder. Postdocs or PhDs in your lab? Um, I have more PhDs, uh, but uh, it would be nice to have some more postdocs. <laughs> that was politically very nice. No, 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 but because of course the it also I I like the PhDs, uh, sure, but it can give. You know, uh, it's quite uh, something to get everybody to uh, the end of the thesis. So sometimes uh, an experienced postdoc is is also uh, very welcome. And who who would you say has been the most inspirational person in your life? No, that I can't say. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay, I will change the question to who. If you could meet anyone in the world, who would you like to meet? I don't have that kind of, of desires or wishes. I really don't, no. Living or dead, so past? No one? Oh, it's the first time I've tried those questions. It's worth a go. How do you find balancing your, 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 the lab and all the efforts and the grant writing, the publication writing, with your private life and actually having a life outside of work? Do you, do you feel as though you have a good balance? Uh, yes, um, although a bit less working hours would be nice. Yeah, yeah. I think it helps to be uh, married to a, to a scientist. Uh, so he understands. And uh, so I, I, I work a lot at, at home. Uh, but that gives me freedom because then, you know, um, I get stressed when there's too much time pressure. So I like it uh, when I just can go on in, in the evening or the weekend. I, I, I don't mind. I, I just want to get it done. Um, and um, yeah, then after that, I, I can plan day free or off. Um, I used to have, but I'm, I'm out of that now. Um, my, which I called my three month schedule that I worked for three months, you know, just go for it and then had a long weekend and that I really planned it because that was in the beginning quite difficult. Uh, when you're young and you think now, okay, I want to go on a holiday, you know, you just go and but but then there's all these appointments and all these commitments and and so we you really and in the beginning I found it very strange but you really need to plan your free time now so i i try to do that um, i i can i can empathize there yeah that's it's a, a difficult question what have you found the most challenging time in your career in the lab what was the most difficult time most challenging time yeah i think that is uh, setting up your own group yeah okay so now i've got to ask is that that was the most challenging. What about the most fun time? I think I'm having quite a fun time at the moment. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, every every. Um, so you see, you know, I'm I'm not a person of the extremes, but I, I think that every time being a PhD is in a way, of course, also stressful. But it is so nice to be able to 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 absorb yourself in your topic and and really go for it, and um, setting up your own lab, being more in charge. It's stressful, but it's also very nice and rewarding. Getting your first uh, last ultra paper out. It's you know it's it's all these these things that that are also yeah very rewarding and uh now um i i i like it that there are you know all the young people in the in the lab and um and, and to see how it goes try to coach them a little bit and um that's also nice to do and uh, just just best way to word this if there's one thing that you could change 
in microscopy or enable or to make possible? What would it be? I think uh, it would be very nice if we had a um, sustainable financing system. Because uh, a lot of people are now, you know, trying to get all these uh, very um, uh, expensive microscopes. And so we are quite talking a lot also in, in the Netherlands about this. And this is all for five years and then you have to. So a lot of the PIs which should dedicate their time to microscopy are dedicating their time to get the money to do the microscopy. And if there would be a, a better system for that, I, I think that that really would help on, 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 on many aspects to increase the field. That is a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> you can relate to that one. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think yeah. most academics could empathise with that. So much time fighting for the next bit. And, and I, I was going to say, what's your first when you get a grant funded? What is your what is your thought within a few hours? I, I would be guessing one of your first thoughts is great. I've got that one next. Yeah, but you should celebrate your successes. So it should last uh, a couple of hours longer that you know, you, know you, you, may, you may say, well done, enjoy it, have a party and celebrate it with the group. I mean, um, you cannot always run to the next one, but indeed um, it is, yeah, it is a continuous burning, burden on a lot of, of people. Uh, that 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 you have these are very expensive uh, uh, instruments you you cannot just pay that from your uh, pi salary or budget so something needs to be done there um i don't yeah i i don't know the answer to that and every country actually has different ways of working i think the uk is really good mm -hmm. uh, york itself is excellent uh but nothing's perfect there's always those extra stresses beyond being able to freely work. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's good because it keeps everyone at, at, on the edge and pushing and, and not sit back on your laurels. But yes, it, it is a challenge. Oh, yeah, but it is complex because indeed, of course, something of us scientists is expected here. Uh, and uh, we cannot just sit here and say to give us the money. You have, we have to do something ourselves we have to try to you know to 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 make the most of it but you also have the uh, commitment of the universities you have the commitment of the government uh, industries we're talking about user fees and uh, all these things need to be come together to towards a uh, sustainable model so judith we we have been talking for an hour now so we will need to stop so Some judith flies, uh, peter sorry Time has uh, has flight uh, yeah, very quick. Much too fast. But Judith, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you everyone who's watched or listened. And please remember to subscribe to whichever channel you're watching or listening on. And get, go and have a look at some more because and Judith's been brilliant. Talked all about electron microscopy. You got Lucy Collinson out there. You got uh, Yannick Schwab out there. Lots of other people in these areas. So tune in, see what they also have to say. Judith, it's been. Fantastic meeting you today. Thank you very much. It was very nice. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you for listening to The Microscopists, a bite-sized bio podcast sponsored by Zeiss Microscopy. To view all audio and video recordings from this series, please visit bitesizebio.com forward slash the microscopists.